Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Modal modulation. I want to take a look at it today because it plays an important part in uh, minimalist music, but also has applications for us as we compose electronica, work to film scores, etc. What is it? How do I use it in my piano music? Well, let's dive in. Well, first of all, if this is the second or third video of mine you've watched and you've just found the channel, please subscribe. We're doing a lot of work here with music theory that's uh, um, useful, that can, we can apply directly to our, our composing, our improvising, our, our producing, right? Uh, we want to come up with ways of talking about complicated musical ideas that are still functional for us, right? And that's why I want to talk about modal modulation, because it's kind of a big word, and you'll you may run across other videos talking about it. But listen, let's uh, let's get a quick definition of it. Uh, look at it on the screen, and then maybe play around a bit. So, I guess the first thing I'll say is, when you modally modulate, you change one set of notes from a specific scale into another without really shifting the pattern around. And let me show you what I mean. So here's my set of notes: um, A, C, D. E and G. It's kind of the pentatonic scale in C. Now, that's the C scale, and it's five notes from the C scale. But if I shift that set of notes into a new key, and you're going to have to know your keys pretty well, we just need to pick the key. Let's say A major, since A is the bottom note. A will stay the same. C becomes C sharp. D stays the same. E stays the same. G becomes G sharp. I've modally modulated from C to A. We can think of these sets of notes as conventional modes, and you may have heard the names of the modes like Dorian or Mixolydian, but I just like to think of them in terms of like, hey, what major scale am I in? Just start with that idea. What major scale am I in? Okay, we'll do it again. Um, and maybe we can figure it out backwards. This time, I'll do this. A flat, C, D, E flat, G. All right, let's look at it here. Now that's a gorgeous sound, and those notes are all the same notes that I played before. There's an A, there's a C, there's a D, there's an E, and a G. A is flat, D is flat, E is flat. This is the A flat major scale. So really easy. Listen to how this works. So C major. A major. Back to C. A flat major, here we go. Now, I don't know about you, but what I experience around that is shifts of color, shifts of emotional quality. And in fact, every mode, every sort of place you live within a scale, you get a different emotional quality, right? And uh, we can play with that idea. Let's say I go one step further. And the step further that I'm going to go is to add two notes in the right hand. So I've got five different notes in the left hand, and I'm going to add two more in the right. That's seven different tones, and that's an entire major scale. As it happens, the two notes will be some kind of B and some kind of F. Here it was in C major. Here's my B and my F. Those are the only two notes that I didn't play. makes a pretty pattern on the screen, and I'm basically just alternating hands, five notes in the left, two in the right. It's a ten-note pattern. You can probably hear it. And that was all white keys. Let's modally modulate to a new key center. And to do that, we'll pick one of the ones that we did before, right? We're going to go to A major. In A major, the F is 
F sharp, and the B is B. So the sound will be. Very different sound. Let's listen to them together. We'll start with the A, because it's fun. Here we go. It's bright. And now we're going to go to C. Oh, interesting, right? The color shift, the emotional change, is the thing that really stands out. In fact, if you get right down to it, it's the only thing that happened, right? I shifted in a way that really created a very different vibe. You could think of the, the pentatonic scale, the C major sound that I played, as kind of the A minor pentatonic, the A blues scale, right? And so that has one color. And then, the brightness of that. Okay, here's a little melody. I think that's pretty. It was all white keys, and to my ear, I'm not sure, but I think it's in F. There's no B anywhere in there, but I think it's in F. And if I played that same melody in a different key, it would sound emotionally really different. Well, let's try chords, so. It's F. So chords in F, simple, it sounds pretty good, right? Now, let's modally modulate that same melody, holding the notes to their names to a different key. Okay, I have a wicked idea. Let's switch it to B major. Well, there's a couple of ways we can do that. One is to just highlight all these notes and go over to scale quantize. It's off right now, let's turn it on. Let's scale quantize these notes to B major. Very different vibe. Okay, this is the last thing I'm gonna show you, but I think you'll be interested in it. I've taken our melody, harmonized it in parallel sixths. So I'm just planing along underneath it in key. So the first one is F. And then a modal modulation to D. Very different feeling and then a modal modulation to A flat. Sounds kind of minor. There's some fifths in there, very plain sounding, very strong. And just to remind you, back to F. We're used to thinking of transposition as grabbing an event like a chord or a melody or phrase or maybe a whole passage and moving it to a, a new key level. Everything went up, everything went down. But modulation can happen in place, so to speak. The F becomes an F sharp, the C becomes C sharp. Or things can get a little more complicated. C can become D flat, depending on how you want things to work. In any case, the pattern kind of stays, stays in place. I am a lazy pianist. I don't want to move my hands all over the place. I want to get the biggest bang from the buck that I can. And when you modally modulate to new places within different scales, you get different emotional colors. Those emotional colors are great for cinematic scoring, for epic music. They're also just excellent for creating backing textures in electronica, in dance music, even in rock. This is not a new technique, and yet because of the way that, and the tools that we have to work with these days, it's not a difficult thing to conceive of and to go ahead and do. I encourage you to experiment with it. It's fun to work on with your hands. Not, it's not easy to do with your hands, but it's really rewarding. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. My channel's doing so well right now. We're approaching 5,000. Well, I know I'm a YouTube cockroach, but we're trying to do some good work here, and I'm really glad you're here. So, I'll see you next time.
Thank you.